Hey guys, this is Drew the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video in Ohio today, uh, visiting some family and friends, but wanted to talk a little bit about the BRNA show down in Dalton and talk about where we bought our first coin collection. So let's get this video started. So right at the end of 2019, when uh, we were at our grandma and grandpa's house, which we are at right now. Um, my grandmother pulled out this pink tote and showed me kind of some coins that she collected over the years in registers and in just odds and ends. And so I really was captivated and, and enjoyed looking at it. And we sat at this table right here. She sat on the far side and I sat right here and we spent hours talking about her time when she worked. Also just some great adventures of finding some interesting coins and so um, this is literally the table where everything started for our business my coin collecting and what it's come to now I mean it's just a really cool full circle and it's just a little bit of behind the scenes of everything that happened with us um, in our kind of genesis but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the BRNA show what happened with it um, and some things that can be improved on and also what did we find there what did we uh, sell there a lot of interesting things but uh, let's take a few things to the table here show you guys some coins and give a little bit of critique about the show so the BRNA coin show what normally happens is that a lot of the dealers and early birds get in at the same time when you go and what they did this year instead was they let the early, the dealers in at about noon and they let early birds in at about three so for us it, it was a little bit tougher because we're driving all the way to almost Tennessee from Houston to go to the show and to find great inventory, but we're not even allowed in at the same time as dealers are. And so uh, another thing that they did about the show that was a little bit interesting is they started to create badges for early birds and for dealers. But the thing about it is that a lot of the dealers didn't send any photos in. It was really poorly kind of managed. And so a lot of the dealers ended up coming in, doing starting to do business, and you'd have to wait in this badge line for almost an hour to get your badge to start doing business. So, um, you know, I was sitting at the back door for a little bit. I was sitting back there at about 11.30. So I, I like to get in early. I like to make myself known. So just in case anything else pops up, I can get in early. And uh, I had a guy come up to me and said, hey, you can't even be standing at the back door. You need to go in the lobby. Um, you know, I'm like, cool, where are the badges? Where, where am I going to get my early bird badge? Is it going to be in the front? He's like, no, it's not. I'm like, so this is where it is. But, um, so they said three is when they let, let people in like me. Um, and so uh, at about 1245, I came to the back door again after sitting in the lobby. And uh, I sat about 45 minutes in the badge line and finally got my early bird at about, you know, about 1.30. And uh, there was about... Two or three people ahead of me, two of them got their early bird badge. And then as soon as I got my early bird badge, she says, well, no, you have to wait another hour out in the out in the parking lot to come in. And I was like, these two people just got their early. So it was very confusing, very difficult. But when I actually got into uh, the, the show, it was pretty good because we had found a few dealers that had a little bit left of uh, the collection that was down in Texas that we talked to you guys about. It was that... Uh, that dealer, his son was selling some stuff, and so I was able to pick up a few more things from those dealers that bought some stuff from him. Um, they ended up paying the right price. He's a really good dealer. His name's Terry. Uh, thank you, Terry. But a very, very good show because we were able to sell a lot to a lot of dealers. We were able to buy a lot, and that's what you kind of want. Like we're talking about blood flow with every type of uh, with every type of coin that you can get. But let's show you guys a few coins here. This is something that I picked up for my collection. This is an 1862 Indian Princess Gold Dollar. And so we bought this coin because we're really starting to enjoy Rattlers and we want them CEC approved. I have a Gold Dollar already, but nothing uh, of this kind of, uh, this type. I think I have a Type 1 or a Type 2. I think this is the Type 3. And so, made in the Civil War. Really uh, like, there's a certain amount of color on the coin too. Not sure if it's been CEC, like sent to CEC yet, so we're gonna send that and see what happens with it. But I do love the coin a lot. One of my favorite pickups of you know of the time there. Got a few other interesting coins here. This is 1877 trade dollar graded AU58. It is CEC approved. 
basically, you know, a lot of these were exchanged between countries. A lot of these were in China. They got chop marks. They were destroyed. They were messed with. They got scratches on them. But this coin really in itself is very original, very nice. And I just don't see coins like this very often. And so I had to pay a premium on this trade dollar and the other one I'm going to show you. But if someone was collecting trade dollars, I want them to have the best value. I want them to have the coin that speaks the most originality to it. And so this one just really encapsulated it, I think, myself. I was showing this to a dealer and he just said it's a really, really beautiful coin. I was asking too much for this coin for him and uh, that's okay. It's just, you know, you want to offer the right coins to collectors because they understand the originality that they want and they also have the CEC sticker to boot. Just a really nice coin. I also bought that one with this coin right here. This is 1876 S trade dollar. These were all submitted a while back it looks like or maybe maybe a month or two ago and they all came back and then got CEC approved all together. So whoever picked these out raw really knew what they were doing. This one's a little bit low of a lower grade XF40, but still nice, original. This one's CEC approved as well. And um, the cool thing about the 77, it still had some remaining luster, but you guys couldn't see that too well. Uh, had some true views on the coins too, which is pretty nice, but very thankful for these. I think uh, the collector, whoever picks them up is really gonna love them. Uh, we ended up buying, like I said, a nice variety of stuff. Here's another one of my favorite pickups of the show. This is the 1890cc Morgan Dollar grade MS63 Dimple by NGC. So, you know, when you're buying dimples, I don't really buy too many 81S dimples or ADS dimples anymore unless they're a really good price or the contrast is really there. And so when you talk about contrast, um, some, some hold, coins were put in holders like this and it says dimple, right? This coin, sometimes they put dimple on slabs like this. If you bought an 81S and it said dimple on the slab and it looked like this, for me, it's just, it's just not worth it, right? But if you see a coin with a lot of contrast like this 90cc, it's a better date. Um, it's something that I wanted to try out, something to pick up. I think a collector would really like it. And I can't find too many of these. I don't see them that often. Um, and so when I buy coins that are a little bit more expensive, if I go to every single dealer's case and they each have one, it's not worth it to me. But I found this one at the show. It's the only really nice better date dimple. And I think someone's gonna really love it for their collection. Really uh, nice mirrors. Has a little bit of a purple rim toning to the coin as well. And so, pretty nice. I think it's pretty cool. Love uh, taking risks on certain coins like that. Um, bought some pretty interesting uh, SLQs here. This is a 28S, uh, great MS65. Not a full head, uh, weaker strike on the head there, but there is rim toning on both sides. We have better photos on AcousticCollectibles.com. I like the character of the coin and I priced it up because of that. And uh, when you start to move into coin collecting or coin dealing, there's some coins, like I said, these trade dollars, this SLQ, the 90 dimp 90 CC dimple, that you can price up because, like I said, you just don't find them that often. I like this kind of uh, rim toning this coin has. It's really spot free, no issues. It is more of a common date, but I mean, just a really stellar MS65 example. And so, uh, I don't mind holding on to coins like this, offering them to people that might like them. Uh, I got another SOQ as well. Um, this is a 1917 Type 1, great MS65 full head by PCGS. This one has a Trivia, which is nice. But, I mean, just getting offered SOQs in Gem State right now is pretty tough for me. And so when I ran into a couple from Terry, I couldn't pass them up. And this one, I mean, I think it's is interesting. Bought it for the right price and moving it for a good price too. Yeah. A few other coins that we want to mention is these these barbers right here that Casey uh, has right in front of him. So when we pick these coins up, I'm gonna move them a little bit my way, Casey. Uh, we got these all from Terry too, but really starting to look like a like a like a date set. Got a 1892 here, a 1905, a 1906. But I mean, just look at kind of the obverse of this coin. It's just, uh, you know, really nice blast white. Um, I think it was, you know, there's no distracting spots on this coin. First year of mintage and, you know, how can you go wrong with a nice barber in my opinion? Uh, bought a, but I think we got a coin for Trent this show. Not gonna show it off in this video, but maybe in a future one, but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to move more into barbers and get more people accustomed to them. 
you know, when you take a look at the reverse too, really strong, nice strike, uh, pretty nice luster as well. You can't beat it. And so when we take a look at a few others here, um, we got, you know, a 1905, 1906, pretty nice luster on each one, almost spot free. I don't think they're 100% blast white, and they might have a little bit of a, uh, might a little bit of color on the rim, but I mean, just really nice, gorgeous examples. Uh, the luster on the 1905 is a little bit better, which is cool. Um, if I can try to spin that one in the light a little bit here, not sure if Casey can pick up on that, but nice flashy coin. I mean, I like it. Can't go wrong with those. But kind of the bigger new purchases that we got, and then we have a few other smaller purchases that we got too. Uh, you know, bought a lot of Morgan dollars at this show because they were priced right in our opinion. A few Rattlers, got a Better Day, got a Carson City. Um, got a few coins with toning here too. You know, an ADS with some toning on it. Um, just try to buy a little bit of everything at the show. Um, bought another one with toning on it. This one's a little bit harder to pick up, but it has some kind of textile to it. Very tough to pick up. This one might have to be sent in for true views, but um, you know, like taking risks, like exploring new coins here. Better date Walker. Uh, also bought you know a, a seated quarter, 1854 uh, with arrows. Uh, it's great AU58. Might want to send this one to CAC. It's a good candidate, I believe, for AU58 plus. And there's a lot of collectors out there that like those everyman sets, so. That's pretty nice too. Uh, better date quarter here. Uh, it's a 1932S. Um, the reason why I bought this coin, like the Barbers, not very many issues with the coin other than it's been circulated. Um, try to buy something that's nice and blast white. And this coin, coin kind of checked all the boxes for us. Uh, bought a common piece dollar here, but the bottom row is what I kind of want to hone in on a little bit. Two more SOQs here at the show. Bought this 1929. SOQ because a lot of these have weaker struck heads and a lot of them are not going to be full head. And so this one is a 1929 grade AU58 uh, full head by PCGS. Don't see those every day and so like to offer them when I see them. You're going to see a lot of 1929s like I said though out there that don't have the full head. Um, and the last quarter that we want to show you is this 1930 um, SOQ grade MS64 full head by PCGS. This one also, uh, you know, it's just a nice blast white coin. Nothing too interesting about it. A little bit of a tougher date right now. I think they're over $500 for these for this date in this grade. And so, um, like I said, very fortunate to run into those. The last coin we want to show you is this 1832 uh, small letters cap bust half. It is CAC approved. Very nice original coin and pretty inexpensive too. And so, uh, can't, you know, I really do like this coin a lot. We hope you guys enjoyed this video talking a little bit about the BRNA show, a little bit about our new purchases that we found. We got a few coins in Ohio that we might be talking about in the next video. And we also have uh, the Tyler show coming up this weekend. So make sure you guys show up. Link in bio for that. Make sure you guys like today's video if you want to see more videos from us about just what our adventures are, what's going on with us. And uh, make sure to subscribe. We've got videos coming out every single week. And we look forward to hanging out more with you, but we'll see you guys in the next video.